the night before leg starts, um, I try to sleep. I want to sleep. I know I need my sleep, um, but it's usually hard to fall asleep. And then um, after contemplating every single permutation of what might happen, I usually fall asleep out of exhaustion. Well, it's the night before leg three of the ocean race. Um, it's the longest leg in the 50 year history of the race. It's more miles than I've ever traversed in the Southern Ocean on a boat that I've never been on in the South. So there's a lot to think about. Um, we've been thinking about this leg since they unveiled the course for this race. And um, the time to think about it is coming to a close and we're actually gonna have to go do it. In my head, trying to play out the start, um, you know, the first couple hours, a little bit more predictable, but um, you know, certainly can't choreograph what's gonna happen on day 35. So um, there's some uncertainty that surrounds it. Um, I feel a heightened sense of responsibility um, got to respect the boat, got to respect the elements. Um, you know, never more than now has the old adage of to finish first, you must first finish, um, been true. So there's a lot, uh, there's a lot going through my mind, you might say. I think some, um, some legs are different than others. I think, um, Struggle sleeping before the first leg, just kind of kicking it all off. Um, and then I think you struggle sleeping when you go into the south. And uh, I think you struggle sleeping in the last leg. And uh, I think that's just, that's just kind of how it goes. I mean, they all count the same in theory. Um, but some are bigger than others. This is the biggest one. I think, I think it's difficult to prepare for, for 35 days at sea. I think um, this last leg was longer than anticipated, uh, 17 days, and you think that we're gonna double that. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive, but you know, on the first leg, we continually asked ourselves, could we do this for another two weeks? Could we do that for another two weeks? What would this look like in two weeks? Is this gonna last another two weeks? So. Um, at least as it relates to ourselves, the gear, um, the hardware, the boat. Um, you know, we've asked these questions repeatedly. Uh, we've put certainly that many hours and that many miles on the boat prior to starting, um, but never in succession. So I don't think I have any rituals, night before rituals per se, other than to uh, just make sure I'm not forgetting anything, uh, make sure everything's in my kit bag, and then really just try to mentally play out you know, how the next day or so um, are going to unfold. You know, Get a good last meal, get whatever sleep I can, and um, you know, for me it's really about the morning of. I try to get down there early, try to make sure I'm never rushed. Um, and actually have time to think and process what we're about to go do. Music is pretty important to me. Um, on board and during the lead up to any leg. Uh, I gotta get my playlists in order, gotta download them, gotta make sure I'm set up for success. Uh, but it's just a good way to block out the noise, kind of center yourself, um, make sure you're thinking about the right stuff. Headphones are a good way to look busy in front of other people to make sure that you get enough time to yourself. Uh, and then on board, some people use um, earplugs. Doesn't really work for me. Um, the music's kind of calming, it's soothing, it helps me fall asleep. Um, but also I can still hear enough in the background to be alert, um, to be on deck, the sights and sounds, um, make sure you don't miss anything. Um, I have different playlists for different moods <laughs> on board. Um, yeah, I, I think music's really important really important for me personally.
it, it, it depends on the day, really. I, I, I got pump up music, I got mellow music, um, I got country music, I got reggae music, I got jazz music, I got 90s alternative music, you name it. Um, uh, I'm a fan of music, all music. Um, I like live music, that's something that we don't get on board. Um, yeah, it's just, it's important to me. Uh, as the skipper of the team, I definitely have a, um, a heightened sense of responsibility. Um, you know, I think in order of importance, it's the crew, the boat, and then the race. And um, whether or not I show that uh, overtly, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't say. But um, I'd like to think the crew knows how I feel about the importance of their personal safety. Um, yeah, and, and on this leg, it's, it's, it's certainly more top of mind um, than, than any other leg in the race, for sure. I think in preparation for a leg like this, we, tr we really try to think about everything that could possibly go wrong and um, come up with solutions um, for those on the fly type problems. Um, and plenty of those things end up occurring. It's the things that you don't think about um, that really come back to bite you in the ass, um, really. And you, you, you don't know what those are gonna be. And, and, and nobody does. And, um, you know, we've, we've come up with a lot of scenarios that have never come to fruition. And, um, you know, we've missed out on some scenarios that have popped up out of nowhere. Uh, but it's the ingenuity of the crew. It's the resourcefulness of the group. Um, that's not only the group on board, that's the entirety of the technical team. Um, it helps us get through those moments. Um, you know, just as unpredictable as the weather is what's gonna fatigue, what's gonna break, what's gonna go wrong. And um, sometimes that can be a, bigoty, a bigger determining factor in the result, particularly on a leg like this, um, than any of the other normal sailing elements that normally make the difference. Yeah, you know, the servicing of the boat is an interesting one um, because by and large the boat was working when we got here but then we take everything apart and we put it all back together again. And we do a couple laps in the Lee at Table Bay and then we sail away. Um, so there's, there's a bit of uncertainty there. Uh, the last leg being longer than anticipated has meant a very condensed technical period. And um, there won't be a lot of time to sail and test before we push off. Uh, you know, we have switch foils for this leg. Um, to our version ones, which are tried and true. And we got 18 months of sailing and 20 some odd thousand miles on them. Um, I have faith in them uh, from a performance perspective and from a reliability uh, perspective. Um, so I, I don't think we'll miss a beat there, but uh, they haven't been installed in a couple months and the rigs come out and you know, you name it. Um, servicing is good because everything needs to be serviced. Um, but then when you put Humpty Dumpty back together again, it's nice to get some reps before you just push off the dock and go. So I, I certainly go to sleep tonight um, with more experience, and in some ways, thanks to that experience, a little bit more confidence um, than I have in previous editions of the race, um, you know, prior to going into the Southern Ocean. Um, all my previous trips into the Southern Ocean have been on a Volvo 65. The Amoka is a very, very different boat. Um, so that's something that's top of mind um, for me personally. You know, I, I remember docking out in New Zealand in the 14-15 race uh, after a cyclone had gone through and the race had been delayed two days and I'd had two more days to think about what we were about to embark on. Um, so tonight certainly feels different than that. Um, but you don't really know how you feel until you get to Cape Horn. I mean, this race, whether people like to admit it or not, has a distinctly different feeling before and after Cape Horn. And um, 
you know, everybody loves the South because it's that sense of adventure and accomplishment and it's why we come back. Um, but everybody would be lying to you if they didn't say there was a, a moment of exhale when you get around the horn and you head north. So um, that's something I think about all the time. As I get older, I think more and more about my family. Um, that's kind of the opportunity cost for me, uh, you know, of being at sea. Uh, that's, that's, that's the emotional part of it. That's the brain talking. Um, but then physically, 35 days on an Amoco where you can't stand up um, really takes a toll on you. Um, whether it's just the everyday grind on the low back or it's the, the, the slamming sensation associated with tight angles or the stop-start nature associated with wider angles. Um, it's never particularly comfortable on board and that fatigue adds up over time. Um, and then back to the brain for a minute, I mean, it's just the mentally taxing drama of every sked, of every weather download, um, just trying to trying to win. The first time I went into the Southern Ocean, I had a, I had a wife. Um, next edition of the race, when I went into the Southern Ocean, I had a wife and two kids. And now when I go into the Southern Ocean, I have a wife and I have two kids with brains. And um, they understand um, you know, what their dad does. That wasn't the case in the last edition of the race. Um, they understand it's a pretty treacherous part of the world. And uh, more than that, they understand that 35 days is different than 15 days. And it's gonna be a while before they see dad again. Um, so that weighs on me, it's different. Um, Life's always different. I mean, the, 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 the parameters, what we're about to physically go do, um, doesn't change. But um, you know, the baggage, the what you leave behind, certainly does. I think there's nothing else I'd rather be doing than pushing off the dock tomorrow and headed into that part of the world. Um, there's, just, there's just something about it. And um, just going through my head right now of all the other things I could be doing, um, none of them come close to comparing. Um, we're really lucky to, to, to be able to do what we do. Um, and this leg is the ultimate adventure. It, 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 it really is. Um, it, it's what keeps a lot of us coming back. Um, I always talk about doing this race for competition and adventure, and the adventure is certainly top of mind here. Uh, at this at this juncture, I'd say.